Good. Yeah. Good. Summer is in session for 2024. Welcome back for episode five, season two of Summer Sessions, a cult media preseason podcast, the first episode for the calendar year. I'm your host, Christian Filippo. Today, our producer is the esteemed Julian Wallace. Um, and joining us today is the man in the number 24, Guernsey, who's looking to back up a career best year. Um, started the week off with a birthday. He's reading himself for year six as a Carlton player, but most excitingly, he's entering his first year as an engaged man. <laughs> um, Jeez, that didn't take long. We'll get onto that very shortly. Nick Newman, welcome to the show. Thank you. That... Uh I thought we might get a few minutes in before you mentioned that, but straight off the bat. Would you prefer it straight off the top and then we'll go into the footy chat or would you or rather not talk about um, it at all? It's exciting <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's exciting. Um, yeah, I haven't loved all the attention on me um, in the in the aftermath, but um, no, it was, it was exciting. It was good news. Well, well, you mentioned just before you came on here that you listen to every episode of this podcast yeah, yeah, so you know yeah, exactly man. how we open all of them yeah yeah i'm such an avid listener yeah 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 so what's your go-to karaoke song nick <laughs> <laughs> uh pays to be prepared doesn't it um maybe a bit of shania twain you know feel like a woman you wouldn't believe it but julian wallace that is his go-to karaoke song as well so there you go he's really that surprises me i don't know what i was expecting but not that i don't know that's just what came to my, yeah, okay, fair came, enough. To, came to my head first well we're going to have the engagement chat now. Sure. Get the questions out of the way, then we can talk about football. Sure. Took you a while. Oh, there's no rush. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Um, yeah, look, it did take a little little bit of time. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've been under the pump for a while, but um, yeah, it was nice to uh, nice to get it done, and uh, I'm very happy. And um, yeah, as I've been saying everyone can leave me alone around here now. Well, let's just say Samantha's a favourite of everyone here at. Cup, the Carlton Football Club. Yes. Um, but when you say you're under the pump for a while, it wasn't just her. I feel like it was all your teammates as well. Oh, yeah. No, no. It was, I wasn't referring to her. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was referring to my teammates, um, the staff around here, our friends, um, our family, my mum. My mum. Um, so, um, yeah. And then my brother followed suit um, on the weekend, so a couple of weeks later. So, yeah, they've been going out 12 years and, um, yeah, we got two in two weeks. Are you glad you got in before he did? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a, a coincidence, um, but yeah, I think um, for everyone it was good. I got I uh, I got it done before my younger brother. That might not have gone down too well with Sam. It would not have gone down well. With <laughs> I remember speaking to a few people after the John Nichols medal, and mm. you're doing a speech, and she actually got the biggest cheer of the night, which I'm not sure you were all that thrilled with. But um, <laughs> a few people in the room thought you were going to propose. Then, well, those people, not, those, sure people, those people don't know me yeah, well enough. I don't think you can think of anything worse. No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> there was zero chance that anything relating to the football club was going to be involved. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, there was no chance of that happening. Set the scene for us. Um, oh, there's not much to it, mate. Just um, no fuss. Yeah, down in Mount Martha Beach, uh, where I grew up, and um, yeah, there was a few too many people around that I would have liked. Um, yeah, and my brother and his girlfriend were down there a, a bit earlier than us. They were down there. They were ready to take a few photos for us. And, um, yeah, he sent me a photo of the beach, and it was pretty empty. I thought, oh, great, there's not many people around. And then about an hour later, got down there, and um, it had filled up pretty quick. So um, I was just trying to find a spot that wasn't too close to too many people. And, um, yeah, I like to think I'm fairly calm and composed, but um, I was yeah, everything but that at that time. And, um yeah, I think I just awkwardly just just thought stuff. I got to go right now and yep. just did it then. So got a couple of token claps from some people on the beach, but um, no, nah, it, it was good. It was um, yeah, we love um, getting back down to Mount Martha, so it's a bit of a, a, a nice special place for us and um, on the peninsula where we grew up. And then yeah, just got to um, have some dinner and a couple of drinks with family, which was nice. You mentioned that your teammates were giving you a lot of flack in the build-up. They've lost their safety blanket now if you're them in long-term relationships. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't have done much more for them. Um, <laughs> I've set the precedent at, at 12 years. Um, I don't know what else I could do without potentially losing my partner. <laughs> <laughs> she might have just given up. But, um, yeah, I think uh, I think 12 years is a, f is a fair bar I've set for some of the other boys. Well, they've thrown you under the bus for a while, so you're willing to throw any more under the bus now? Of who's oh, next? I've been torn whether I just go and, and put the pressure on other people yeah. or not. 
Um, You're wondering whether to mention Jacob Wetter in my yeah. name. Or- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's one. Maybe Cots. Cots might not be. He could be a surprise. Um, but no, I, I've tried to opt and um, be the bigger person and, and not now put pressure on uh, on others because I've been on the other end of that <laughs> stick for a long time. And you don't like it? No, not <laughs> particularly, no. No. Well, they've lost their safety blanket from an engagement perspective. Mm. But you've lost your own with Ed Kerno departing. <laughs> Can we now call you a veteran now, officially? <laughs> As the um, oldest player on oh, the list. Well, I can't really argue with that anymore. I, f- I feel young, um, young at heart, and uh, probably the way I, I carry on and have a bit of banter with boys around the locker room, I, I probably don't act my age. But, um, yeah, I am officially the oldest. So, um, yeah, it's sort of weird to think, actually. I feel like I have i haven't been in the system long and all of a sudden you, you're the oldest on the list. Um, I mean, <laughs> I do think... Um, yeah, at any other club, I wouldn't be the oldest. I think yep. it's it sort of says how young we are as a group. But um, yeah, there's something that's uh that's that's sort of cool in that as well. It's like I've probably never envisioned myself being at a club and, and being the oldest on the list. So it sort of means I've been around for a little while and um made some sort of career out of it. So it's been good and kept your career best year until you were thirty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's just a number, isn't it? So uh. Yeah, hopefully I can uh, go one better and make it a career best at 31. That'd be nice. And go one better in the best and fairest as well? or <laughs> No, I'd like to go one better and, um, or a couple better in yep. in the uh, in the month of September. Um, so, yeah, no, I, uh, I'm happy to play my role. And, um, yeah, I'd like to uh, like to be at the pointy end as a team next year. That's definitely the goal. Well, this year, this year, that's the goal. That's a media department approved answer. Well done. <laughs> well, we did have Jacob Wetering here on the corresponding episode last year and yep. worked out pretty well for him. So we're trying to... Good, what we good omen, is yeah. it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sweet. We'll run with that. Well, how is Wetters going? Obviously, unfortunate news at the end of last week. Yeah. You caught up with, with Jacob in the last few days. Yes. I uh, I sit next to Jacob every day in the locker room. So um, so you have caught up with him, yes? Yes, I have c- caught up with him. Um <laughs> You know, he, he was a bit grumpy for a day or two, so I steered clear of him. But um, no, he, he's going all right. He's um, yeah, he's the the ultra professional he is, and um, yeah, it's disappointing for him. But um, yeah, he'll attack it like he does everything else, and he'll get back as soon as possible. Um, it's disappointing, but um, yeah, it's so early on in the year, and there's so much of the year to go, and he'll do everything he can to get back, and and he'll still obviously help us. Um, enormously around around the footy club leading and um, helping the other guys it's Tuesday as of recording this mm. podcast and I think it's known as Gym Junkie Day downstairs yeah. um, there's a few interesting kits going around can you tell us what exactly is going on yeah we like to um, every now and again just have a bit of fun and um, we sometimes wear have themes for the day to wear into the club um, but yeah today was um, we had an upper body session today so um, yeah, just a bit of a theme of gym junkie. So um, there were some different interpretations of what that gym junkie actually means. But um, yeah, there were some good kids kits rolling around. Uh, Matty Kennedy, he sort of organised it. So um, he led the way with his kit. Uh, yeah, I think a few boys were in their element though. Any others that you got for best rest? Um, Sam Walsh had a Walsh kid was, kind Walsh of Walsh was good, yeah. Um, Cots wasn't bad. Um, but yeah... Um, Matt Kennedy was definitely the standout. <laughs> um, breakfast this morning, past players yep. came in. Um, I guess how much does the playing group, current playing group, enjoy that chance? Not only mingle with maybe some players that you used to play with, but mm. I guess people that came before you um, and wore the navy blue. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I think for a lot of guys, we we watched some of them growing up. So um, yeah, to now be in in their shoes playing and um, to be able to for some of them meet them or, or have a relationship with them. Um, yeah, it's great. It's, we we want to be a club that, um, you know, past players want to come back to and, and be a part of and feel like um, when they're watching us play that, that they're still part of it. Um, and so that's been a really big part since Vossi's come in. And, um, yeah, it's great to have some of them there t- today for breakfast and um, and just to form a bit of, bit of a relationship with because, um, yeah, we're all going to be past players at some point. So, um, yeah, I'd like to think that we'd be welcome back like those guys are. They brought their kids with them, but yeah. do you still reckon Aaron Hamill and Jordan Russell enjoyed having their past teammates here more than anyone else in the room? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially Jordy, Jordy Russell. Um, he was in his element, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was in his element. Um, he was laughing and no doubt sharing a few old stories. Um, so, yeah, 
it was um yeah it was good to see though um in 2024 mate we've touched on a little bit about your last season now in 2023 i guess how do you aim to back that up from a personal perspective um for me it's it's sort of more of the same um yeah i felt like i got a good mix of um you know attacking and defending last year and, and had a good prep into um in pre-season and, and had a lot of work under my belt and um some consistency of playing without some injuries for a couple of years so um yeah for me it's it's more of the same um yeah i'm coming into 31 i just want to keep my body in good nick and um yeah i think the beauty of us and, and where we're at as a club now is that we don't need anyone to you know um drag us over the line and, and win us games individually we've got so many contributors over the field so for me it's just being able to um, play my role in that and um, help out wherever I can and contribute to us winning which is the main thing you're approaching 100 games with the footy club now obviously you reached 100 career games yep. late last year um, guess what have you found out about yourself in your in your time here because you were at a bit of a crossroads I think you've said it yourself yeah. when you made the move over from Sydney yeah it's um yeah, it's, it's gone pretty quick. I can't believe I'm coming in my sixth year already at Carlton. Um, doesn't feel like I've been here that long. And um, Yeah, I mean, I feel like I sort of have grown up um, here a little bit. I felt like um, I had a great time at Sydney and learned some really valuable lessons um, that have probably helped me now. Um, not so much at, at the time. I probably took it for granted a little bit at the time in Sydney. But, um, yeah, been able to reflect on um, some some things I learned there. And, um yeah, that, they instilled some really great habits into into me, and um, I got to see some fantastic leaders at the footy club at, at Sydney, and um, that I've been able to carry here. But I, I really feel like I've sort of grown up into um, who I who I am and who I wanted to be um, since I've come to Carlton. So um, it's been an awesome experience so far. I think I got here and we come off maybe a, a two win season, and to feel like we've we've been building and. Um, yeah, to get to a prelim final last year and feel like we're in a really good position as a footy club and um, as a playing group to really attack um, the year and hopefully have some successes has been awesome. Um, and yeah, I'd, I uh, yeah, I'd love to to play 100 games for this footy club and, and get my name on a locker. It's something that um, yeah, I'd love to do, and it'd be a really proud moment if if I was able to do that. Was it quite fitting for you and George Hewitt that that first final came against? Came against the Swans. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like I think the old sort of team thing, yeah. um, it sort of disappears pretty quick. I think that you know the first first time you play them is a bit weird and awkward, and um, and even sort of we played them twice um, in my first year here, so they were sort of a little bit a little bit awkward, and um, you don't know how to approach it. Speak to guys before the game, don't speak to them. Um, but then yeah, after that first year, it sort yeah. of disappears and. Um, and especially with the turnover, like there's so many guys at that at Sydney that I'd never played with anymore. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, the enormity of it was more, much more around us winning a, a, a final for the footy club and um, being part of it. So, yeah, you played as a as a higher tier defender a few times um, last year. Kicked your first goal in, I think, four years as a as a result of that. Um, can we expect more of the same going forward, especially with someone like Zach Williams, maybe? coming back into the fold this year? Um, I think so. I think, look, no doubt it'll, it'll probably be a little bit of a mix like it was last year, depending on personnel. And um, Yeah, but I think it'll be, yeah, sort of relatively high. Um, no doubt there might be times where I have a bit more of a, a match-up. Um, but, yeah, I think for the most part it'll probably be a little bit higher up the ground. But, I mean, the beauty of us as a back line is we feel like we've got so many guys that can play different roles you know you've got Sadi who can play high and run but he can also do a lockdown job um, we saw Gov do a couple of those um, and and do a really good job we've, we've got Zach obviously coming back into the fold we've got Boydy um, who is having a great preseason, no de- no doubt develop a bit more so um, we feel like we've got a really sort of hybrid back back line that, that guys can play different roles so um, yeah we'll see how it pans out close to the year but yeah it'll probably be pretty similar if you do happen to hit the scoreboard, though, any yes. chance you're putting any work into your goal celebrations? Because <laughs> the shucker left a bit to be desired. Yeah, no, I um, yeah, I'd, as you can probably tell, I don't put any work into my <laughs> goal celebrations. Um, Unlike some of your other teammates. No, yeah, th- I was coughing a bit of flack. I think it was after a game. I think it might have been you actually videoed. Sorry about that. Yeah, videoed us post game, and I don't know why. I just naturally went like that, and um, I was coughing a fair bit of flack from Cots and King and. Because I don't surf, I, I got no interest in surfing. I'm the last 
guy that would be a surfer <laughs> um so they'll give me some flack so yeah i don't know when i when i kicked the goal i just i just did it as as a bit of a joke <laughs> stupid but um as you can tell not much thought goes into it right, it's on national tv mate yeah, so it's all I good. Know. yeah still better than your goal celebration for your first goal at carlton against richmond Oh, that you was, reckon? That, that was a carry-on. Yeah, right. I don't know. I, I, I got some positive feedback about that one from a few of the boys. I think you lost all control. Yeah, I, well, I mean, first game for a new club in front of 90,000. Um, it was uh, It was good. Yeah, the blood rushed in my head a bit on that one. <laughs> um, this philosophy that... We'll go back to the more serious stuff now. We won't mention about your celebrations <laughs> anymore. The philosophy around making your teammate better, I yeah. guess, what does that look like from a day-to-day perspective? And I guess... Is that a Vossi thing? Is it a Cripper thing? Is it an everyone thing? I guess who's who's driving that? Yep. Um, we like we'd like to think it's an it's an everyone thing. Um, you know, Vossi's clearly big on it. Um, so it's Crippers and Cripper and the leaders, and we think, um, yeah, I, I suppose not even just the playing group, the whole footy department um, buy into it. Uh, yeah, we feel like um, we yeah we we speak a lot about being a great teammate um, and what that looks like. It's not just on field; it's off field. Um, and we feel like um, naturally when you invest in others, you end up getting a reward yourself as well. And um, yeah, if we can go out, especially on game day, with that mindset to make someone else better and make the guy next year better, then um, that's going to hold us in good stead. And we felt like the second half of the year, we sort of, um, we really bought into that with actions, not just words. And um, yeah, we felt that was a big contributor to probably turning the season around. Don't want to harp on 2023 too much. Obviously, it yep. is a new year now. Um, but I guess what does having those finals wins under the belt now do for, I guess, the confidence levels of the group? Because I feel like for so long it was hopefully we get there, but yep. got there, won, won two games. I guess how does that translate to, to this preseason? Yeah, I think it, it just gives us confidence, as you said. I think, um, yeah, you, you don't want to hang on to the past and, and sort of, um, yeah, drag any of that into this year because... Um, that's obviously not helpful, but at the same time, we learned some really valuable lessons um, throughout the year. And then um, I think the one from finals was just that the way we want to play and um, the way we did play stacks up. Um, you know, even against Brisbane, we, we played the way we wanted to play for, you know, a quarter, quarter and a half, and it, and it works. Um, so for us, it's just now about doubling down on, on um, our brand and, and making someone else better. Um, bringing pressure, defending first. Um, yeah, all those things you probably everyone probably heard us speak about in the media. Um, and so for us, it was just a bit of, bit of validation and confidence that that kind of footy stacks up at, at the end of the year. I guess, is that what's been driving the playing group this summer? Yeah, I mean, um, we want to get back there. I think um, everyone in the AFL world um, strives to, to play finals and play big games and, and be there at the end of September. And... Um, yeah, that's no different to us. And uh, I think the great thing at the moment is that um, everyone wants to be part of the journey and um, guys are, are cracking in. There's so much competition for spots. And, um, yeah, we've got a taste for finals footy. And, um, yeah, it's, um, you, know, you don't play in any better games and, you know, finals at, at the G with 90-odd thousand. And, um, yeah, it's, it's addicting and um, addictive, sorry. And, um, yeah, you can, you can really see guys want to be part of it. And... Uh, so it's pretty hot out there and there's a lot of competition for spots, which is which is great. Mark Pitnett mentioned last week that I guess fast ball movement's been really been a focus um, in the last you know few weeks of, of mm. pre-season. Um, he even ripped out a few yeah. blind turns in training to go with it. Yeah, I did see that <laughs> feeling the big big Brad. Um, yeah, he's, he was moving well, wasn't he? Um, I haven't seen him do... He had a couple of blind turns on, on, on the one day. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, I think he caught everyone by surprise. So, uh, yeah, no, we... Look, we want to um, play an exciting brand of footy, and um, that includes the rucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, they've got a license to uh, play what they see, and if he wants to do blind turns, then good luck to him. As long as it works out. As long as it works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one caveat. Um, preseason cliches. Some of our favourites. Oh yeah. Who's flying? Who's set for more midfield time? All yep. that kind of thing. You got any? You got any for us that? That caught your eye out there on the track, or oh, who's ready to for a bit more spot? I don't want anyone to get a big head. Um, oh, look, we do have a few boys that have come back and grabbed. Mentioned Boydie before. Yeah, Boydie's going well. Um, oh, I could name, I could name a lot to be honest. And, um, a couple of the small forwards, of Durds and Motts have come back and great Nick. I think you know, they ran PBs in their two k. Um, yeah, they're they're putting enormous pressure on. It's um, 
it's uh it's great to see but it's um yeah, it's also daunting when they're you're looking around because you feel like they're going to get you at any moment um yeah big uh young harry lemmy he's he's had a really good um pre-season um yeah he's uh he's doing some great stuff yeah i'm, I'm sure a few boys have mentioned binzy binzy came back in great condition and um yeah he's desperate to play some senior footy after um having a pretty good year in the bfl um yeah th- there's a lot of guys and as i said before like training's at such a high standard at the moment and guys are cracking in that um yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's some good competition at the moment. Now, when you walked into this room for the podcast, you said you didn't want any heads up on what was coming. Yep. But we did give you one question in advance. Yeah. In the space of the last two hours, what have you found out about David Cunningham? Nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Had nothing in six years, so what would you start now? <laughs> yeah. um, I thought about making something up, and yep. then I thought, no, I'm not going to do it because everyone wants to find out about Cunners and what he does, but we don't know either. Yep. Um yeah, it's it's a great mystery what Connors does in his spare time. Um, I don't know if I want to know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's his own man and he lives in his own world. Um, we love Connors, but um, yeah, there's a lot of um, mysteria around him and who he is and what he does. So um, may that continue. We love David. We do love David. Um, and this is one that came up, I reckon about 18 months ago now. This one's about you. Um, On the podcast? Uh, well, I think it was a post-season chat. Oh, okay. Um, someone called you Gru. Gru? Yes. No, no, no. Because you are the puppet master and you've got a few minions that kind of run around <laughs> wreaking havoc. <laughs> Who called me Gru? I've never heard that. You've, have you you've made, the, you've have made, we posted the vision? You've made that I've up. I've got vision. Gru. I don't, I don't know if we can warp the I've voices. I've heard someone else called Gru at the footy club. I won't throw under the bus, but... I don't think I've been called Gru, but it anyway, and it was I'll one of your, it, it was one of your minions who, like, he said he himself oh, yeah. was a minion, and you were the kind of supreme leader that kind of pulled the strings. <laughs> Rubbish. Not I true. Don't, I don't believe a word you're saying. <laughs> so, what are you insinuating that I is that true that I've got puppets? <laughs> yes. Yeah, essentially. I can be persuasive. <laughs> um, and if if you could hazard a guess of who might have said that they were one of your minions, who who do you reckon that would that would be? When was it said? End of 2022. So they weren't drafted last year. No. Also, you got one. I've probably drafted got last a couple year. of additions. Jackson Binz. <laughs> Binzy. Lockie Cowan. Well, Binzy's moved lockers next to me as well. So um, I don't know. Is it always or Honey or I don't know? You're forgetting the one in that kind of group. It was Matthew Cottrell. Cotts. <laughs> <laughs> did he call me? Yeah, he did. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Is that true? I don't think so. Yeah. No. Can you see what he might be? I feel suggesting? like I'm part of the group. I'm not, okay, not the, so you're not the ringleader. Not you're the just leader. One of them. No, okay, no, I think I, I think I'm part of it. But anyway, well, we'll actually, we'll go further in the past. This was on a podcast, mm. um, a previous Carlton Media podcast called The Two Tones, um, where the Nick we had let's a bring back. Let's bring that podcast back. Right. Moving on, Nick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the nickname of Onions was unearthed uh, back then. Yeah. Um, have you successfully managed to shed yourself of said nickname? Shed, nice. Um, uh, I think so, yeah. Well, I don't really know how that came about. I think, to be honest, we were calling someone else Onions. Yeah, so we used to be into our nicknames a bit when I first got here and we'd always look at funny nicknames on facebook they'd post like the best local footy nicknames and we'd always try and relate them to someone at the club and um <clears throat> there were some good ones and i think onions was i can't remember who it was it was someone else and then for some reason the boys played a prank on me we were playing a few pranks in the locker room and someone put like i think it was harry and maybe cots put like i don't know probably hundreds of onions in my locker so when i opened it all the onions came out so then onions somehow flipped to me for a period uh, was it because you were always crying was that was, was that that was that was the that was the 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 meaning reason, behind it. the meaning yeah. behind onions was you know, he's always crying about something which i don't like to think i'm a huge <laughs> complainer around the footy club so i'm pr- i'm pretty certain it was about someone else which i might throw him under the bus <laughs> but then it did get flipped to me for a period but that that nickname's well and truly gone and um yeah n- noodles is the one that's yeah, unfortunately stuck. Yeah, but unfortunately I've, I've being had, key word there. I've had to accept that. Um, the more you fight it, it's just yeah. the worse it gets. So I just accepted it, but it actually stuck. So, I mean, there's worse nicknames. There, there are. You could get Seinfeld references all the time. <sighs> yeah, I, that's a bit. I'm a bit over those. 
I've well, got I've got so many of them over the years. Any time there was some sort of news around me, it was Helen Newman. So, yeah, that one's a bit old for me. Well, you put the challenge out to us saying you thought we could get more creative. Yeah. And then we started using noodles, which you weren't thrilled with either. Yeah, well, I don't think I'd be thrilled with anything, really. I don't um, love too much media or spotlight, um, especially when it's uh, stuff like that, noodles and mucking around. But um, I'm a bit more serious. But... um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> but I can I can cop noodles. It's okay. Would you prefer not noodles at all? Or is no, that, I'm is that fine with noodles. It's it? it's too far gone. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Um, any dirt on any teammates that you want to share? Oh, because I feel like that's broad. That is, that is a very broad thing. <laughs> Anybody who's I, come up in this podcast that you wanted to? And I haven't thought um, enough about it. I don't really have any off the top of my head. That's and I don't want to stoop to that level yeah. on this podcast. I stoop, feel to, like stoop to their level. Their level, is it? Yeah. yeah I, think I so. feel like the podcast can be better than that. Than I throwing guys can. under the I bus. I think you've got more faith in me than I do. Yeah, I'd, I could throw some blokes under, but I won't. I'm, I'm the oldest on the list now. I've got to be, yeah, you're mature, I've got to be mature yeah. and better than that. Because notably, Ed Kerner never gave anyone any flack. He was always just straight down the line. Yeah, yeah <laughs> true. He was the opposite. Um, we'll move. We'll change tack now. Mm. This can be a nice one. Um, we played a bit of fantasy last year in terms of Supercoach draft. Oh, yeah. Um, you love it? Uh, I love my fantasy, yeah. So I've, yeah. I'm big into my NBA fantasy. We've yeah. had a comp for a while. Um, and we, like, we put a little bit of money in. Like, it's it's a pretty serious comp. Um, and then, yeah, I did a little bit of NFL for fun. And then um, I hadn't done Supercoach since I was like, you know, a teenager and um, there was a comp going here so I thought I'd get involved top three teammates who you'd won in your Supercoach draft this year ooh um uh, I'd go uh, Walshy I reckon as like a premium yep um jeez I want to try and go someone a bit maybe like a bit of an underpriced but maybe Elijah Holmes I reckon yep he could be good value. Um, uh, I don't know. There was one last year who got through the draft very late and I managed to pick him up. Yeah. Um, thanks for your work last year, <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Yes. <laughs> I think I knocked you out at one point as well, didn't I? Uh, yeah, I think I... <laughs> yes, inevitably hurt myself with the super coach. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I, uh, I was glad that I had an okay year so I didn't have to deal with you complaining about my super coach scores every week I just um, want to try to do it yeah <laughs> true um, yeah I don't know we've got a few good super coach candidates this year but um well played yeah it's um it's always funny when you're doing super coach and you know the boys have I think Cooper picked himself one year and made and he, himself no, captain no he tried to oh, he tried himself, to but, did he? He, I think he got picked before his own right. pick and I think yeah, he was yeah. pretty flat about yeah, that yeah right <laughs> yeah it's always funny when you're coming in and encouraging boys to you know take a kick in or um giving them a bit of flack about their super coach score adds another layer to it that's for sure so would if you finish last which you won't do because obviously you're super through, coach yeah yeah would you bleach your hair blonde <laughs> <laughs> or red uh, or would, orange or whatever gov's got going yeah, at the moment i don't know what color it is it's um yeah no i i, I don't think i'd be bad enough to come last but um yeah, it's a pretty stiff punishment. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I'd struggle to bleach my hair blonde. You couldn't st- do it. It stands out. Jeez. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Another top three, top three teammates who you reckon would um, get involved in a bit of racket rage at the Australian Open if they were taking part. Oh, a bit of anger. Walshy. Yeah, he, he's, he's number he's one. Number one. Yeah. He has white line fever. We <laughs> love Walshy, and that's what makes him a great player. But um. Yeah, sometimes you can see red and there's just no stopping it. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's number one. Um, oh, Binzi would... Um, maybe not racket rage, he'd just suck up. He'd... Yeah. Um, the bottom lip would drop. Onions? Um, yeah, uh, onions. <laughs> he'd probably just walk off the court and quit, I reckon. Um, and then... Uh, who else? Maybe he's... Oh, Weeders can get pretty angry. Mm. Yeah, he can throw the toys out of the cot. Yeah. It takes a little while, um, but yeah, when he when he goes off, he goes off. So I will say, we just. I'm not saying anyone has said this, but could you see a world where if we asked another teammate, would you feature in their top three? Um, <laughs> maybe in pr- 
previous years. I feel like I've got a little bit better (laughs) of recent times. Um, When I first got to Carlton, I reckon I would feature, yeah, fairly strongly or uh, moderately, but I feel like I've I've tamed down a bit, so I'd hope I don't get too many mentions anymore. Well done, Nick. That's great. Well done. Yeah, I've matured. (laughs) We'll end the podcast on a wholesome note. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, as a big listener of the show, you know this is how we always end the podcast, Nick. Yes. Um, Why do you play football? Geez, that's a deep question, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I probably should have done some research. <laughs> um, oh, I I love the people in a footy club. Um, yeah, like I, I love playing the game. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, that's why we all play. We we love training and, and all that goes with footy. But um, yeah, the part we love the most is, is, is actually playing the game. But um, yeah, for me, the, I, I love the environment a footy club brings. Um, yeah, you've got so many people working towards a common goal. Um, yeah, I just love the day-to-day stuff, the banter in the change rooms, um, the conversations you have with, with players, staff, fans, um, just how it can connect a, a community. And um, Yeah, I've, I've been lucky enough to be um, playing AFL for now my 10th year. And um, Yeah, for me, it's, it's all about the people you meet. And um, I've been lucky enough to meet so many great people along the journey and, and the friendships and relationships you build. And... Um, yeah, I don't think there's um, any environment quite like a footy club, and um, yeah, that's why I probably feel young. Is um, the, the boys around me having banter and, and mucking around, and you come in with forty-year mates and, and have a laugh every day. Like that's just guaranteed. Um, I don't know how many other jobs in the workplace you, you, you get to come in with so many of your best mates, and, and you know you're gonna have a laugh. Um, and so yeah, that's that's probably why I love footy. That was a nice way to finish. Yeah, yeah, I think so. How was your first helping of summer sessions? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Um, I don't know if I'll be coming back, but um, it's, it's a one-time only thing. Is it class. great? Good, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, no, I um, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Nick. No worries. Ta. <laughs>